Arthur Curry, better known in the world as Aquaman, is one of the most misunderstood heroes in any comic book universe. He is often the butt of lazy fish jokes, and to casual fans does nothing more than talks to his fellow aquatic friends. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Aquaman sucks. Aquaman is one of my favourite superheroes and deserves to be treated with much more respect. Hey everyone, my name's Trent, and with the Justice League imminent, we look at the history of this classic character and why he deserves his place among the greats. Right ain't over yet. My man! If this is your first time here and you want to know a little bit more about movies, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything here at Movie Nerds. Believe it or not, Aquaman is one of DC's earliest heroes, debuting in the backup features of 1941's More Fun Comics issue 73, just two years after Timely Comics, better known as Marvel Comics, unleashed their Atlantean character Namor the Submariner. Created by Mort Weisinger and Paul Norris, Aquaman is part of the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, long thought to be lost to the world. Like many DC heroes, Aquaman's comic book history is convoluted, having been repeatedly rebooted over various crises and events that have significantly changed Arthur's origins. Later interpretations have generally stuck to the same origin, with Arthur's father being a lighthouse keeper who fell in love with an Atlantean Atlana. Say that ten times fast. Many of Aquaman's stories in the 40s revolved around fighting Nazi fishermen and boats, as was the style across the various publishers. He was also included as a founding member of the Justice League in 1960's Brave and the Bold issue 28. Even though Aquaman was a staple of the publisher and a key leaguer, it was the television series that started to give Aquaman a bad rep. From his appearances in the Hanna-Barbera created Superman Aquaman Hour of Adventure to the Super Friends, much of the depth of the character had been established in the comics had been relegated to him riding a giant seahorse or dolphins and using his telepathy to talk to fish. It's easy to see why anyone would think this character is a joke. DC enlisted the help of renowned X Factor creator Peter David to take over Aquaman's comic series. David's interpretation of Arthur Curry was much more of a loner and badass, while also sporting long hair and a beard. As a result, the character started to regain his credibility and popularity leading to regular appearances in the Superman origin television series Smallville, albeit a much younger and kind of attractive version of the character. But the reset button was hit yet again when the New 52 eventuated and rewrote Arthur's history. Writer and now DCEU mastermind Jeff Johns helmed the character in the series that received much acclaim in the often polarised New 52 universe. John's passion for the character was reflected in the story, allowing readers to understand what makes Arthur so compelling. He's a man of two worlds, torn between them with a duty to both, but without feeling like he belongs in either. Oh, the feels! It rebuilt the character into the powerhouse that is now easily seen in the upcoming movie. He will definitely be the breakout character of the Justice League, owing much to Momoa's charm and charisma, and will revive the character's standing in the minds of fans. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I hear you can talk to fish. 